I'll have a little uh, quick overview of some 12-loop interpretation, trying to get us back on schedule. Um, this is a, a method that I use. I know there are other ones out there. Um, hopefully, this will be something you'll find helpful. So there's six steps that uh, I use whenever I'm, I'm looking at a 12 lead. The first thing is we have to figure out rate and rhythm, access deviation. Then we go on to, um, do I have a long QRS, QT uh, segment? Then just how does the complex look? Do I have anything that may make me think I have a, something that looks like a STEMI but isn't really a STEMI? And then ultimately we get to see if there's a STEMI. So step number one is just like you always have, you have to determine the rate and rhythm. Um, so all that stuff that you learned uh, last semester about uh, how how many boxes and is it regular, irregular, and PRI and QRS interval and all that. Um, looking at this one here, I count. If I were to think that one's pretty close in line. I got one, two, three, four. So about four, just a little bit over four large boxes. So if I take three hundred. And divide that by four, I end up with 75, about 75 beats per minute. This is probably a three second strip, so it looks about right to me. Um, PR interval looks pretty good. Um, I have one P wave for every QRS. QRS complex looks normal and it's fairly narrow. I would just call this a normal sinus rhythm. <clears throat> After that, I figured out axis deviation. And uh, again, I like to use just this up and down thing, um, looking at leads one and AVF to see if I have it. And uh, I always like to refer back to that quadrant that we have uh, with this being normal. And there's a little bit of extra there, but this being left, this being right, and then back here is extreme and figuring out which way is, is kind of up and down with these. After that, we look at QRS um, duration or QT interval. And this is one that we haven't really talked about yet. Um, what we're trying to determine here is if I have a long QT syndrome. So between the, the uh, Q and the end of the T should be less than half the dif distance from R to R. So um, however far apart those these two complexes are, um, the QT should be half of that or less than half of that. If it's more than half of that, which is what is showing down here at the bottom, you see you got the Q wave starting there and then this kind of long T um, and then the real short distance before the P wave comes back. What can happen when this person exercises or gets a little bit excited, this T and P wave almost become one and then they end up with VTAC. So this QT interval is something to look at um, as someone, typically a younger person has a period of um, uh, maybe some syncope or something while they were exercising or excited, um, and then ask if they have a family history. Um, if someone in their family may be dying early, an uncle or something, because a lot of times this is a genetic thing that happens, and it's a channelopathy. There's a problem with the uh, the ions uh, moving back and forth in the channels. And then we look at the morphology, and primarily what we're looking at here is we're looking to see if we have a right bundle branch block, left bundle branch block, or a hemi block. Uh, we talked about that in a previous video. So check to see if you have that. And I put a couple up there just for reference to look at. And then mimics. And uh, this is this is probably hard. Um, you, you can see there's a lot of them here, and we're going to talk about a couple of them. But to really truly know what each of these looks like um, is difficult. Um, no, no doubt about it. Um, and this is where experience um, comes in. And if you're ever in doubt, I would go ahead and say it is a STEMI versus saying, nah, probably isn't. It's probably one of these other things. So let's look at a couple of these. One of them is this left ventricular hypertrophy. And if you think about it, the left ventricle, um, if it is very large, <clears throat> maybe due to chronic hypertension or some, a valve defect or some other condition, um, you're going to have a very, very large um, T wave, or I'm sorry, R wave, not T wave, R wave. So you would have something that would be very big compared to what the rest of it is. And if we're looking at this, this EKG here, um, you can see that it's, you really can't even tell where the T wave ends and the next complex begins the way this is printed out. Um, so that's um, pretty classic of a left ventricular hypertrophy. <clears throat> um, 
STEMI then, um, and this is kind of what we get excited about. This is what we're calling the hospital about. This is where we're heading to the cath lab. Um, we joke that uh, really all we have to do is just read that. If there's three um, three stars on each side, then we need to call the cath lab. Otherwise, we can just go to the hospital. Um, that's obviously not true, but that's kind of kind of the joke. The machines are somewhat accurate, but they, they make mistakes about 25% uh, of the time. So finally, the cool stuff, the STEMI. This is when we get to do the IV and the oxygen and the aspirin and the nitro and uh, <clears throat> rapid transport to the cath lab and all the cool stuff. So what we are looking at um, is our baseline, and there's something called the J point, which is right about there. And this is where um, the S comes back to the baseline. And if it is above that, we call it elevated. Now, for a male, we need to have at least one, two boxes. So this one, for it to be ST elevation, would have to be at least right up here. For females, they say one and a half boxes. Um, I think that's really getting fine for us. Um, just realize that there are some differences between male and female ECGs. Um, and another thing to, to, to look at is you may have a little bit of artifact in there. And if your QRS complex is, is you know, like way up there and then you come up to here, that's elevation, but it's minor compared to the entire, entire complex. So here's some ways um, that we, we see this ST elevation. Uh, and you'll notice on, on most of these, if we were to uh, draw a line, um, I think our J, our baseline would be there. So our J point is elevated there. Baseline would be there. J point is elevated at that. Here, and there's your J point there. And this one, I would actually say the J point's about right there. Um, same thing here. J point is probably right there um, <clears throat> where your S wave ends. So your ST elevation is actually, I, I'm calling that the J point. I should say that's where the S turns into the T. So your ST segment, which is way above your J point, your J point should actually have been where the baseline was that I was drawn. And then there's also these things called mimics. And um, these are these are hard. Um, and again, I tend to err on the side of safety. In fact, they say something like um, nearly 50% of the MIs that medics call in actually aren't true STEMIs. Uh, but we tend to err on the side of, of caution and, and call them that way anyways. Uh, one of the things they want us to look at is um, to see if it's a slightly upward. I'll show some more on this. Um, on, on another slide, or if it's downward looking. Uh, so pericarditis, that would be a hard one to be honest. If I um, if I was looking at this one here, I would be awfully tempted just to say STEMI. Uh, I don't think I would feel comfortable enough with pericarditis unless I had a history of things like fever and recent sore throats and, and just really didn't feel like a STEMI to me, but they we're still having some chest discomfort. Now, this benign early repolarization, uh, BER in this case, that's a really difficult one. But if I look, there's my baseline and my J point, and I have elevation there. Here is where that's kind of smiling up, and they say that that's probably benign early repolarization. Usually, this is a, a younger person and fairly healthy. Um, we already know about left ventral branch blocks. And then, um, this uh, Brugada down here in the bottom um, is, is another one that if I had a young patient um, that had a syncopal episode, usually think like middle school, high school, uh, and I did a 12 lead on them, which we should be doing 12 leads on all of our kids that pass out, and I saw that, I would say we need to go to the hospital. So this smile morphology is, is what they're getting at, and I understand it a little bit, but I don't fully buy into it because there are times where I've had STEMIs that have had the smile morphology. Um, so again, I don't think this is 100% accurate, but it's a, um, just something to make us maybe feel a little more confident in our, our diagnosis with this. Um, one of the things we can do is we can look back at reciprocal changes. So if I were to see and uh, I'm not sure how this is going to show up on yours, but here's our AVF, and here's our lead two. I was going to have you guys answer this in class. Of course, this is lead one, and this would be um, AV left. 
this would be AB right, and over here would be 3. Um, so if I had elevation in lead 2, if I go opposite of lead 2, which is really fairly close to AVR, I should have depression in it. So if you see elevation of 1, it's an MI, you should have um, <clears throat> depression in the reciprocal leads. This really only works well for the inferior leads, uh, because if we look at our chest leads, you know, we have um, V1 here and V6 over here. There's no real reciprocal to that. You know, what is this lead over here? Unless you do a right-sided MI, uh, a right-sided 12 lead. Now, when the 12 lead prints out, this is what we see. And um, I kind of color-coded this for you. This AVR, uh, we really don't use uh, much in, in determination of an MI, but if I see elevation in something called a contiguous lead, and a contiguous lead just means that the area is near or touching or next to. So things like Alabama is contiguous to Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida. It is not contiguous to Wisconsin. Um, there's, there's space between there. So if they're next to each other. So uh, <clears throat> these leads, 2, 3, and ABF tend to look at the bottom and the right side of the heart. So that's our inferior. We have lateral leads. Remember, this would be on the outside, so kind of on the left side of the heart. And most people will say that this is sort of a high lateral, so the upper part of the left side of the heart. And this would be more of a low lateral, uh, lower side of the left side of the heart. Um, although you look at most of these um, diagrams like this, and they just say lateral. Um, anterior, B3 and B4, those are the front side of the heart, and then septal is right there in the middle. <clears throat> so this is kind of trying to show the picture of the heart where you would see the different leads. Um, inferior, of course, is the right and the bottom of it. Septal is sort of there in the middle. Anterior is on what we normally would think of the front side. And then lateral is getting around to the side or to the back of it. And you want to get even a little more uh, technical with it. Um, you might be able to make a guess of which artery is blocked, although everybody's arteries run a little bit differently. So it's kind of hard for us to, to truly say this until we get over the cath lab. Um, now, one artery that I, isn't on the diagram but is there um, kind of runs behind the pulmonary artery there. And that's your, your left. And that's also called the widow maker. And the reason we call it that is if you have a blockage up in this area of the left, um, left coronary artery, you basically lose all of this part of the heart. And of course, without the left ventricle, the person dies. So um, the blockage in that artery is, is critical. Uh, they usually are dead within an hour. So let's look at a couple of them. Um, the, uh, answer popped up a whole lot faster than I wanted to on that. Sorry about that. I must have uh, done something funny in the in the uh, settings on this slide. Um, but when I first look at this, I always come over here and look at the inferior um, simply because that changes my treatment of it. If somebody with an inferior and their right side of the heart damaged, they are very what we call preload dependent. So their blood pressure is very much dependent on the amount of blood coming back into the right side of the heart. So if we were to give nitroglycerin and dilate the blood vessels, we would reduce the amount of blood coming back to the right side of the heart, and these patients then would have their blood pressure drop greatly. Now, it's not a big, big deal. They say it, it, it well, I say that. Um, depending on who you talk to, some people say it's a huge deal. Some people say it's not so much of a big deal. But if you give a nitro and you see a significant drop in blood pressure, it's probably because they're having the right side of MI, and you don't want to give a second one. Um, so just watch for that. Um, after that, I come look at my uh, chest leads, uh, lip, uh, yeah, chest leads, and I don't really see much elevation in V1, although V2, I'm seeing some good elevation there. V3, definitely V4, and even a little bit of V5. Now, V6, I don't. Uh, so this really is over two areas. Remember, this would be septal, um, and this would be anterior. And this would actually be a little bit lateral. 
So this would be a good anterior MI that is spreading a little bit into the septal region and a little bit into the um, uh, lateral. Looking at this one, uh, again, a, a look over here first, 2-3 ABF. Don't see much there, maybe a little depression in 2. Um, of course, if you want to see that, would be the opposite of 2. And that would be ABR. I also see some depression in that, so that doesn't make much sense then. Um, but I do see B1. Oh, look at that in B2. Some big stuff there. B3, B4. Maybe a little bit there in B5. Maybe. That's stretching a little bit. And then nothing here in B6. So this would be another anterior septal MI. Look at this one. Um, beginning to see some patterns here. It looks the same. Now, if I look at the whole 12 lead thing, I start with the rate rhythm quality. Um, <clears throat> actually, it looks like a fairly normal rhythm. Um, normal sinus rhythm is what it would look like to me. Um, morphology looks okay. I don't see any real access deviation, no bundle branch block. QT looks okay, and then I start to see the, the STEMIs. And again, looking at 2, 3, and ABF, I don't see it, but I see a little bit there. I see a lot there, a lot here in B3, B4, and I would even say B5. So another anterior septal. Don't worry, in your um, packet I'll give you in class, there will be um, many, many 12 leads to go through, and there will not be all anterior septal. So looking at this one, again, uh, rate rhythm quality, access, any deviation, morphology, QRS duration, or QT segment, all looks pretty good. But then I start to look, because I always start here in my, my inferior. Some people will call this a foot, um, because it kind of looks a little bit like, I don't know if white was a good color for that, but it, they say it looks a little bit like a foot. Uh, I'm all right with that. Um, but I do see some elevation in three, and it's really kind of hard to see in ABF. Um, and the thing that strikes me about two is this big, huge T wave. So I'm guessing a little bit there. Now, I had to think at three, um, lead three, the opposite of lead three would be ABL. And I do see depression in that. So that makes me think that I do have elevation here. Um, and I don't really see much of anything in the um, in the chest leads. So... This one, I think, I would say an inferior. So again, search your IVs, maybe get a fluid bolus. Be careful with the nitro. Running through all our rules, right rhythm quality, access, deviation, looking for any bundle branch blocks, QTs, morphology. <clears throat> and actually, this one almost... Now, it looks narrow enough. I was going to say for a second there, I thought I saw a bundle branch block, but it, it's still narrow enough, so it's not that. And uh, axis looks pretty good. But looking at my inferior, I see some elevation there, see a lot of elevation there, and see elevation there. And this is one of those times where if I look at my, my complex, I get a smiley face. However, this guy is having an inferior MI and uh, needs to be taken to the cath lab pretty quickly. Uh, hopefully this helps a little bit. Uh, when we get back to class after all this snow, we will have more opportunities to, to practice these.